You're listening to Soul Coffee, the podcast for the exhausted provider who wants more energy, more presence, and to enjoy this beautiful life. I'm your host, Dr. Jamal Fruster, and over the last few years, I've trained hundreds of students, chiropractors, medical doctors, nurses, functional medicine doctors, uh, chief nephrologists, and different healthcare professionals and different providers, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, from a place of burnout back to a place of presence and of potency. In today's episode, it's for you if you've been listening to me for a bit and I'm excited to highlight a map of sorts to start to give some structure to Soul Coffee so that way as you navigate this podcast, as there's been about 80 episodes, I want you to be able to navigate with more ease and efficiency as there's five or six pillars that I teach from and I want y'all to be very clear on those. This episode's for you if you're new or old to receiving chiropractic care from me as well too here in Tucson or maybe in the past as there's additional resources that go in conjunction with my care and that's where Soul Coffee comes in because I can provide resources, I can explore different topics, I can go deeper and I can give different resources that are relevant to your health and healing journey that I found to be very, very potent and very, very uh, powerful and effective in care with different people and this episode is also for you if you're just looking to tune into more of what a natural lifestyle can be like if the pharmaceutical drugs aren't working, if the, that coffee just ain't hitting the same, and you're still yearning for more energy as it is my intention to be able to just lay the land and be able to craft the map for you as I'm super, super, super excited. So first and foremost, if you've been following me for a bit, I think it'd be dope to lay the map for you as when I teach providing for the provider, which is my baby, there's five or six different principles which I teach on, and they are this. One is communication and needs. The work from here stems from Nonviolent Communication by Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. Nonviolent Communication by Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. This work has been so pivotal for me because I find that communication, communication, communication is everything. A lot of providers get stuck because they can't communicate their needs and if you don't know your needs well then it's tough for you to communicate and why is that even important if your needs aren't met well then ensure that you experience different emotional states of stress dis-ease frustration anger sadness bitterness resentment the list is endless really and it's important for us to be able to identify what are our needs and be able to communicate effectively to our practice members to our family members to those we're in a relationship with to our peers at work to our bosses especially to our partners so communication is massive 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 for me in addition to nonviolent communication, you could also reference Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you want like a basic like kind of picture just so you can better appreciate and understand, well, what are these needs? It goes from a biological sense all the way up to actualization. I go deeper in this in different episodes. What I'll give to you in this moment is episode 71, softening self-judgment and the self-critic. And then the impact of not getting your needs met with myself as well, too. That's episode 76. That's a new one where I give a different framework as well, too, to be able to explore things. The second thing that I really love to be able to explore as I'm building out this map is polyvagal theory. And polyvagal theory is something that's come in the last few years in my chiropractic studies, as in case you don't know, for some reason, chiropractic was founded on the nervous system and founded on tone. What is tone? Tone is a reflection of the overall energetic state of an individual. Why is that important? Based upon one's tone, and if it's in a stress state or in a relaxed state, this will dictate then their thoughts, their feelings, their actions, their behaviors, their habits, and overall life expression. Therefore, when you can understand polyvagal theory, which is an understanding of the vagus nerve, which is a cranial nerve, that is interwoven in so many different systems, our GI system, our cardiovascular system, impacts our immune system as well too. When you can understand how to influence this nerve to activate it, in a sense, to come back to a relaxed state, and you can understand the world in this way as it's about energetic efficiency or conservation, which I like to say, because so many providers and so many people are living in a chronic stress state. We're only supposed to be there for meh, 10 to 20% of our day, but the vast majority of people, they live there. I don't want you to live there. So polyvagal theory is so important. And my favorite, favorite episode when it comes to that is uh, healing through burnout using polyvagal theory with Dr. Jordan Bonham, episode number 74. One of the hottest episodes that's dropped over the last several weeks. Third concept that I teach on, I think it's interwoven. Um, that's a whole nother conversation, but burnout. 
burnout and trauma. I only reflect that these two are interwoven because the person that I brought on so many times, um, she's very, very um, enmeshed in that work. And that's Erica Cooney, who's a licensed marriage and family therapist, aka the burnout professor. We've had amazing conversations, amazing conversations when it comes to burnout, where it comes to trauma, where it comes to attachment theory, when it comes to polyvagal theory as well, too, and how if we don't understand the developmental trauma that occurred when we were probably non-conscious or at least we weren't able, we were non-verbal, well, that gets trapped in the body, that gets trapped in the fascia, that gets trapped in the nervous system itself as the spinal cord and the brain, the spinal cord being an extension of the brain is kind of like for my 90s and 80s baby, it's like the VHS. It's like the VHS or, and in understanding that it's like a video recording or it's a part of that kind of like an uh, expression of, I guess, 90s and 2000s. It's the fine fabric. Our spinal cord is like the fine fabric in the video where when that got messed up or mashed up or cut or whatever, well, then it messes up the video, no? It distorts it. Understanding trauma is understanding how your body distorts and then your lens now isn't, you could say, clear per se, but you're receiving uh, information in a way that is now coming in based upon your past and not based upon what reality actually is or in a clear sense. And in other different teachings, I've said it gets muckied up. I want y'all to be able to be clear. So the key component to rebuilding oneself from burnout while working in healthcare with Ashley Taylor, this is number 61. And then we got the attachment, trauma, and the importance of healing your nervous system as a provider with Erica Cooney. This is episode number 63. She was also episode, I believe, number 26 or 27 back in the day before I even started recording this with Lou. Uh, and then the last one that I'll offer to you when it comes to burnout, when it comes to trauma, is the number one obstacle to healing and wellness for the provider. This is episode number 65. It's so good. Uh, moving forward, got a few more for you. The mind and energy. This is important in understanding health. As a chiropractor, my job is to be able to help you come from a stress state to a relaxed state. But not only that, not only that, it's to help you understand your internal and your external environments so that way you can appreciate what are the stressors, what are the thoughts, what are the traumas, what are the toxins that then are distorting your system and pushing you back into a stress state. Why is energy important when it comes to that? Well, energy is important because energy and matter, aka your body, aren't separated. They're inseparable. They're inseparable. Like life isn't this reductionistic, mechanistic model that I at least grew up with as energy is the fabric that is interwoven through all things. And if there is an organism that is living, there's an energy that is allowing the matter to animate and allow the intelligence which created the matter which organizes the matter the energy is like the bridge in expressing oneself when you can understand that energy isn't this woo woo thing but it's that very very important thing for you to be able to not only just be able to learn and to be able to sensitize yourself to but it's 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 mastering and identifying it when are you in these stress states when are you in these states of dis-ease and what's causing that because when you can get clear and clear that at the conscious level and the non-conscious level which is 99 percent of what we think feel choose, choose and perceive well baby that's when the game changes and that's some really really exciting stuff y'all so uh, i break down um episodes number 43 which is in the top 10 with selena watson how to break out of your internal prison uh, transitioning out of the hospital and how to write your own lifestyle prescription number 44. This is from Marianne Messissar Blair, my homegirl from Canada, who is a fitness nurse and she is a beast of a personal trainer and a nurse in her RN. Uh, she was also episode number two. I got to go back and edit it, but she's episode number two and it's writing a lifestyle prescription and being able to understand that. Um, and then the final one to that is uh, how to live powerfully in 2023. So this was at the beginning of last year. This is episode number 52. And, excuse me, there's one more, managing your fatigue as a provider, and that's number 73. Uh, I created that last episode because there was a request in how to build a program out in understanding energy, understanding fatigue, understanding, you know, what is this life? So that's very important. Uh, last section, if you will, on things is agreements, values, and boundaries. 
your values are what create the bedrock for your existence. And when you can understand that, you can then craft the agreements and you can craft the boundaries. The agreements are like how you engage with your relationships, your loved ones, your, your peers, your, yourself, Woo, yourself. And it's important to be able to live in your values because when you don't, that is a predisposing factor to burnout. And it's just a matter of time before you experience frustration, you experience emotional exhaustion, you experience um, like you're spinning your wheels and then you experience this, this resentment when it comes to those people around you. So that's very, very important. So uh, the episodes that I would recommend there are the why and how to create space for yourself, number 41 with myself. Uh, the most essentially yet overlooked cause for burnout, number 53, with myself again. Uh, and then self-loyalty, one way to heal through betrayal and set boundaries. This was episode number 60. And then how to create time, space, and energy as a provider. This is episode number 68. Uh, so you're in for a treat, y'all. I want to just lay those five different pillars because I teach deeper into those. And guests in the future for Soul Coffee are going to go deeper into those because I want y'all, if you were to listen to Soul Coffee for a year or you have been listening for a year, my main objective is that I want you to be able to have this comprehensive map in how to navigate life from an empowered, inspired, curious, and you can do it. You can do it stance. That's natural. It's just a matter of allocating and mastering our minds. And being able to really express ourselves and understand self at a deep, deep level. Um, and then the final few gifts for you is, you know, I just got meditations as well, too, which I'll create in the show notes. So please reference those, um, you know, the different aspects to things. But that's the map, per se, of how to begin to take care of oneself. And when it comes to care with me as a chiropractor, first month, and I'll just start with first and I'll go in the second month because I think the third and beyond from that it's where that's where like the fun really unfolds because the first two months is typically where i'm going to see the most of you and of my people because we got to create reps i need touch points or frequency to be able to really shift your life and your health from where it was to where we want it to go and that requires time and that requires effort and that requires intention so in your first few weeks of care, one number one thing that I tell my people is like, you got to create space for yourself. You got to create space for yourself, because if we don't create space for ourselves, it doesn't matter, you know, the exercises that I might recommend, the stretches, the um, recommendations, because if you're consistently like up to your neck with what you got going on, well, then we're not creating space to uh, quite literally breathe. And that's very important. Uh, number two, show up for your adjustments. If you don't show up, I don't even get a chance. I don't even get to partake. Like, I don't, and that's not, I'm not saying that's not fair, but that's not fair. Uh, but it's not fair for yourself. You're not even giving yourself an honest try to be able to give this lifestyle, which isn't just chiropractic, it's a natural lifestyle, y'all. Like, there's no pharmaceutical drugs that I've taken in the last oh, eight to nine years, as I'm thinking, I'm like, it's 2024. Um, like eight to nine years, like really um, going through chiropractic school and understanding this um, when I grew up with that very much. So, and that's very, very important. So create space for yourself, adjustments, and then you got to do the work. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So actually venturing out and I have, we have different exercises that I recommend and cleaning up your mental mess, Dr. Joe Dispenza's book and the different books that I like to offer as well too and providing for the provider. It's, it's just showing up with both cheeks all in on your life so that we can give yourself the opportunity to change your life because if you don't put in the work, like, well, then we're not going to shift things, at least at a depthful level. And I prefer depth because what I find to work the best is when people partake and they actually do the different recommendations, the exercise, the foundation training. Um, if you've been to our healing essentials class, you know that we go deeper into natural uh, healing and the different pillars, which is movement, which is recuperation, which is presence, and which is nourishment. I could go in and for hours on those four alone, but come to our healing essentials class. The next one's going to be in February, first Wednesday of the month. But movement, you got to move your body, recuperate, we talk about sleep, but recuperation is a tone. It's not necessarily just an activity. Um, and that's very important to understand. Presence, that's a lot of the work that I do because it's a lot of mental aspects of things. And when we can understand our mind and we can understand the impact of our health and our mental expression, well, that's where the game really begins. And then nourishment, what are you putting in your body? What relationships are you around? And then what is your thought nourishment? These are four components. 
the other four that I want you to focus on, these are the last things as I end out this episode, uh, the four elements, sun, make sure you get good vitamin D in your system. If you're in a cloudy place or you're not in Tucson for whatever reason, it's important to supplement vitamin D. It's very, um, it's very cheap as well too. Um, but that's big for the immune system. And the sun is so big in regulating our circadian rhythms as well too. Rising with the sun and then being able to look at the sun the first few minutes it's up and then the sun set when it's going down as well helps regulate and circ- uh, activate the primal biology so that way uh, our melanin and cortisol cycles are balanced. Water, baby, you gotta drink water. <laughs> uh, take whatever pounds you weigh and cut that thing in two. If you're a woman on a cycle, if you're in the desert, if you exercise moderately to vigorously, you're probably gonna wanna drink a little bit more than that with some sexy re- electrolytes. I like Relight or Redmond Salt, it's what I recommend. Um, you can get Redmond Salt at Whole Foods and a, if you need you know, Relight, well, just Google it as well too, as that's some good stuff. Uh, next one is air. You gotta breathe. A lot of providers breathe like this, ready? <laughs> we gotta breathe. Your breath is one of the most powerful and potent tools you have to change your life. And when I can help teach my people to move their bodies and breathe, (sighs) decompressing the spine, creating space in their spine, but they able to leverage their breath as they're moving and as they're navigating through life. Well, life is easier. Life is more connected. Life has more space. And the last but not least, Mother Earth, you got to get into nature. We live in unnatural environments and work in unnatural environments majority of the day. So getting out into nature, going on a nice sexy hike if you're out here in Tucson, getting by some water, uh, going on a trip, uh, exploring, or bare minimum, just getting your, your, your feet, your bare feet onto the ground 10 to 15 minutes a day in the morning or in the evening, maybe when you're looking at the sun because now you can start to stack your needs getting met. It is so, so beneficial. There's hundreds of of research articles and studies that have studied the impact of this and what it can lead to one's life. So uh, do that and do that more. And keep in mind with all these recommendations, when it comes to uh, the pillars of health, when it comes to the elements, when it comes to the map that I gave you at the beginning of this episode, it's all step-by-step. Healing requires time. Healing is a process. It's supposed to be. And there's gonna be different challenges, different stimuli, different impulses, different stressors of life that are going to challenge our health. And when you have integrated and paid attention to the lessons from the pain points, whether it be burnout, whether it be low back pain, whether it be migraines, whether it be anxiety, whatever, they're all warning signals. It's the body trying to intellectually communicate with us. But we're in a society where we haven't held reverence for our bodies anymore and I think that's a part of why the U.S. is so sick because we've severed ourselves from nature and we're not even paying attention to that which we are which is nature so as you embark on this journey whether you're a veteran and this is whatever wherever you're at in this healing journey or you're just getting going May be able to stay curious, may be able to stay excited. May you reflect to me anything and everything that comes from these episodes, that comes up in your heart, that comes in your mind, that comes in like as a genuine question. Like, I'm with y'all. And it feels good to craft this episode at the beginning of the year to make sure uh, that I am with y'all. And however long I reference this episode, because I plan to use this episode for years to come. So I am so excited. I'm so honored, of course, as always. Uh, if this resonated with you, hey, check out some of those other episodes. And leave a five-star review as on Spotify and on podcasts app. I'm about 90-something reviews, and I read them things, and they're so beautiful and delicious. And we're also at 60,000 lifetime downloads for Soul Coffee, y'all. Like, that is amazing, y'all. Like, I I hope that y'all see the video. But if not, I I trust that y'all feel my excitement and my honor and, like, oh, the deep reverence that I have for that. Like, that fires me up, y'all. I learned, I I didn't even know, but I was missing out on 25,000 downloads that I didn't even know existed. And it was on, it was on the Apple's, uh, the Apple diagnostic and um, numbers app that I didn't, I I had forgotten to study. So I'm fired up for this year, year, y'all. So uh, tune into another episode. Take care of yourself. You're so loved. You're so appreciated. You're doing great. And until next time, peace.